Hi. Um, so I'm, um, this is this is about my partner and I. Yep. Um, and and I've talked with her about this, you know, to to make sure that it's okay that I kind of bring this up with everyone. No worries. Um, so I uh, we're just we we're really new to this. Um, just learning about it as of this week, and I see that in some ways it's it's pushing us apart. Um, right. And and I really. Um, I, I found that it, a lot of it is really true for me, and so what I've been doing, what I've been doing is like, um, kind of talking about you know my feelings, my emotions, twenty four seven. Yeah. And she and she's absolutely sick of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and and I would like to find um, you know, she says that she would like some more balance, mm -hmm. and um, I can stop talking about what I feel all the time, and and so I just kind of you know like to know what you think about that, and and like something that came to mind is like okay, we can go and take a walk. Yep, and if we're going to take a walk, then what what's going to happen is maybe maybe some fear will come up, you know, like some emotion will come up, and I'll say, okay, this is really bothering me, and I can either I can keep it inside or I can talk about it, and if I keep it inside, it's going to keep bothering me, and then it's going to start bothering her because it's bothering me. Yep. So and w one choice is you can keep it inside. Yep. Right. Um, the other one is that you you can talk about it. Right, and so I I'm and I really try to own it, you know, and say this is how I'm feeling right now, but. I just, it, it's, I'm doing it all the time, um, and it really <laughs> seems to be bothering her. So There's a third option. Okay. <laughs> ah, yes, 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 yes. Reveal it. What I'm getting at is that often our desire to talk about something is our desire to actually involve the other person in the process of feeling it. Do you see that? So I'm not saying don't talk about it. What I'm actually saying is look at the motive. It's a bit warm in here again. Can we just have those air cons on? Um, so can you see what I'm saying about that? Um, so what, what's actually happening is oftentimes keep it inside, worst possible option, obviously. You know, if you keep it inside, you're exactly right. When you keep something inside, it automatically affects everyone around without you or them perhaps even being aware. But most of the time we are sort of aware that it is occurring. But unfortunately, too, when we keep it inside, we then act out lots of different things that we could easily not act out if we started to talk about it. But talking about it is only is driven by a lot of desires that are within us, a desire that other people understand me, a desire that other people get me, that they know me. that they. So a lot of times our talking about it can actually be a heavy, heavy projection partner. Does that make sense? And the key is to, to try to stop talking about it so much and ask yourself, why am I wanting to involve my partner so much in my emotional work? And when you start doing that, you, you, you can still t stay talking about it, but you start actually feeling it instead rather than just talking about it. Because, and, a, and a good sign of to whether this is happening is this. If you talk about it and straight away get into a causal emotion because of the talk, then that's a good, that, that demonstrates generally that you're not talking about it just to have someone else involved in the process. Does that make sense? But if you talk about it today and then you raise it again tomorrow and then again the next day and then again the next day and then again, and it's talking about the same kind of thing each time, that's a high indication to you that you're actually avoiding the underlying causal emotion and wanting to involve the other person in the emotional process. And, uh, and actually it's an avoidance of feeling it. So the key is the motive. Now, let's say your motive is to feel it. So let's say that is your motive. And let's say your partner's motive is that you don't feel it. What do you do then? Well, the truth is under those circumstances, it will create a separation between the two of you. Because one person has a desire which is to feel, right? And the other person has a desire passing through them, which is to not feel. Now that obviously creates disharmony between the two parts of the relationship. Now, at some point, one or the other has to change their viewpoint. Does that make sense? So in other words, the person who's feeling has to turn off their feelings to match the partnership again, or the person who's not feeling needs to look at the reason why they don't want to feel and allow themselves to start feeling. Now, there will be times in any relationship where one person's feeling and the other person's not feeling. Does that make sense? What do you do with those moments? Well, the, the key is to not 
want the other person to do what you want them to do. So, so let's say I'm the feeling person. The other person has decided to not feel at the moment. All I need to do is say to them, well, I can see that you don't want to feel some emotions. I want to continue feeling mine, so I'm going to continue feeling mine no matter what happens. <laughs> and so I keep feeling mine. Now, the other person then has a choice to make. Do they want to allow me to continue feeling mine, emotions, or do they want to try to prevent me from feeling my emotions? Now, if they allow me, I can stay in this relationship as soon as they prevent me, now I've got to really look at my love of self. Because if they're preventing me from feeling my own feelings, they're preventing me from being me. So therefore I need to look at that emotionally. Now, now my suggestion is, if, if each person doesn't project at the other the expectation to do anything, then I, who the fe I mean, the feeling one at the moment, won't project at the other person, you've got to feel. I won't say you've got to feel. Right? Because they, they have free will. They're allowed to choose to not feel, right? But I also won't put up with them trying to stop me from feeling. Does that make sense? So, so when we're, with myself and Mary, what we do is this. If, if I feel from Mary that she's trying to stop me from feeling my own emotions, I will say that to her and I will actually leave. So um, in our house, we've got a house that's 500 yards away from our tent. And leaving means me walking down to the tent and I stay there. It might be three days, four days, five days by myself, right? Until I can feel from Mary that she hasn't got this desire for me anymore to shut down my own feelings. It's okay for her to shut down her feelings. She's totally able to do that. But for me, it's not okay for me if she's trying to shut down mine. And vice versa, by the way, right? So if Mary is feeling something and I'm trying to get her to not feel, then I'm... I'm the person who's trying to resist the feeling that by, by not trying to get the other person to do something, I am out of harmony with divine truth and divine love then. So it just depends on how things will flow in the relationship. I can actually live perfectly in harmony with a person who's not feeling their emotions as long as that person doesn't try to shut me down from feeling mine. As soon as that person tries to shut me down from feeling mine, now our relationship is not going to be very harmonious and one of us will probably finish up going. My suggestion is if two people can stay open even to not projecting at the other person that they do anything, in other words, if each person in the relationship is completely okay with free will, to be completely okay with free will you need to have coming from you no projection or, or force going at the other person that they've got to do anything. Now if that's coming from me and that's coming from my partner, no matter whether we're feeling or not feeling at the time, we are going to probably still have har harmony. Now the connection might not be fantastic because obviously when one person's not feeling and one person is, one person will feel all these emotions that the other person not feeling, so the connection may not be very strong in that moment. But there will be harmony because we're not both trying to damage each other through our projections. But as soon as one person chooses to try to control the other person and their feelings, that's when we get way, way out of harmony in the relationship. Yeah? Now, obviously the best solution is for both people to choose to feel all the time. That's the way God created your relationship. And, and, and yourself as a person, to feel all the time. And if both of you feel all the time and don't want to control the other person all the time, you'll have perfect harmony in your relationship. Um, and what if I express you know, how I'm feeling, and I'm, I think that I'm really feeling it, and it brings up a really strong emotional reaction for her? Then, then let's say so you're feeling something and you then express that feeling, so whatever that is, and you tell her, she's then feeling this, you tell your partner and she's feeling something in her, the key for her is just to allow that feeling. If she allows that feeling, then she won't project anger back. Does that make sense? But if she doesn't allow that feeling, then blocks that feeling off in some way, with judgment of some kind, now there will be higher likelihood of you getting anger back or resistant back, resist resistance back or whatever. That's when the damage begins. 
So it all depends on what I do with owning my own emotions as to how the relationship is going to go. If both parties are fully committed to, f to only owning their own emotions and not projecting the need for the other person to do anything, then when one or both of us are not feeling, we are still going to have relative harmony. As soon as one of us decides we're going to control the other person, now we have no harmony and there's going to be some pretty big fireworks after that with one or both. And so that's the issue that everyone in a relationship faces. My feelings are that you've been attracted for, through your law of attraction. There's emotions inside of each of you that need to be addressed in this law of attraction. If you can stay in the relationship and address those emotions, even if it's not a soulmate relationship, you can stay in the relationship and address the emotions. You'll work through a lot of the blockages that you have regarding relationship and regarding love of self and love of others. If, you, if one of the party chooses to not feel all the time, eventually the person who's feeling will annoy the person who's not feeling so much that the person who's not feeling will probably leave. Yeah. But the person who's feeling won't make them generally leave. And the only time the person who's feeling would actually say, you know, hang on a sec, this is enough, is when the person who's not feeling projects rage and anger and shutting down emotions towards the person who's feeling. And then you would have to say, all right, my love of self dictates that I shouldn't be here for the moment. It doesn't mean it's permanent either, by the way, just for the moment. And by the way, many of, many of you feel that if your partner's not feeling that it means that they're not attracted to this truth and therefore they're not your soulmate. I am... It's totally erroneous, by the way. Many of you will have soulmates that are definitely not attracted to this truth initially because of their emotional injuries. Does that make sense? So if you judge your partner and say, oh, because she's not into what I'm into, she's not my soulmate, you may actually just be kicking your soulmate out of your life that 25 years later, you, you can't, or even two years later, you go through a lot of emotions and realise that, that she was your soulmate, and you'll go, all oh, this regret will come up then. So the key is to stop trying to judge everything like that and just both let yourself feel your own stuff if you can. And, but if one of you is not feeling, then the other person needs to stop trying to make them feel. Because when you try to make anybody do anything, it's out of harmony with love. Straight away, I'm, I need to learn something inside of me if I try to force Mary into doing something. Unless the issue is about I'm getting something from Mary that is not loving and I need to love myself, then I'd need to choose to leave the situation. Does that make sense? Does that sort of answer your question? So, yeah, just be care very careful about the talking about things. Because constant talking about things doesn't mean you're dealing with it. Right? It's better than not, you know, than keeping it inside. But often the motive to talk about things is driven by this deep desire that we often have to be heard or to be listened to or to be acknowledged and all of those kind of emotions which are all emotions that do need to be healed within us to have a loving relationship. Yeah. And by the way, today I'm answering a lot of like what you'd call, I suppose, psychological type questions. Any of you who feel that this is the normal thing that we talk about um, would be very mistaken. But it's very good to answer these questions and I just want to clarify why. Every emotional blockage you have also blocks your connection with God. So everything you shut down within yourself is also going to mean a shutdown between yourself and God at some point. So it's very important to address these emotional issues if you want to have a relationship with God. Yeah.